Uh, all right. So I think this is uh, the full chapter on iterations, and I'm not sure how long we were able to stay uh, in our last session. Uh, but basically, I had planned to divide this whole chapter into two parts. Uh, the first part focused on uh, primarily on loops. So how do we, uh, you know, what's the basic structure of a loop? Uh, uh, how do, what are the different variations in a for loop? Uh, yes. How can we modify an existing object using a for loop? What are the different patterns? Uh, how can we use loops when there is an unknown output length? How can we use loops when there's an unknown output, like the sequence length? And then uh, we went into the differences between loops versus functions and yes. had a bit of an introduction on the Perl package. So I'll start from here today. Uh, we'll, yes. we'll go over the differences between loops and functionals and then uh, take a deep dive into the uh, Perl package and the map functions. Uh, what I'll do is I'll I'll keep it I'll keep it pretty uh, overarching. So uh, I went through this chapter like a couple of times, and I and I still don't have a full grasp of uh, the Perl package. It's 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 quite complicated to uh, master it. I feel, uh, but I think uh, going over this uh, this this overarching. Uh, abilities of this function and what we can do is really exciting. Uh, and I hope I, I'll be able to like explain some of the uh, important features of the uh, function. So yes. uh, yeah, so let's just get started. Uh, so uh, the difference between uh, loops versus functionals that we talked about is the, the, in the previous session was that uh, for loops are, are not as important in, in R uh, as it, because it's a functional programming language. So we can uh, wrap loop the function and call that uh, function. So for example, we were working with this data frame which had four different columns. And uh, what we could do was uh, to create this function called column underscore mean, where we were iterating across all the columns and computing the mean for all the columns in, the, in that data. Yes. Uh, so, so we could call this function call underscore mean and we could get like all the means. Uh, the question was that, you know, what happens if we have to uh, calculate the median? Now? And we saw that we could uh, do something like call underscore summary where we provide uh, different functions and uh, it would calculate uh, that, compute that function basically. So we can pass on the value of the median instead of the function or the value of the mean instead of the function. Uh, so these are really interesting ways to, uh, in which, you know, for loop can be manipulated to, uh, uh, to, to uh, kind of uh, iterate over different values as well as different functions. And, Yes. Hello?
Hi, Malik. Sorry, I uh, got disconnected. Are you there? Yes. Welcome back. Sorry, I have I have uh, internet connection issues, so I'll keep my video off. Hope that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But you can share your screen. Yes. Yes, I am. Uh, yeah, so as I was saying, uh, so, so that uh, idea around uh, uh, around uh, functionals kind of uh, was a good sub segue for the Perl package where, uh, you know, the idea is to pass a function to uh, another function and kind of leverage that to create really, uh, really robust packages that iterate over different elements. Uh, and we know that there are like the apply family of functions that can be used to do that. Uh, but the per package is far more robust and far more consistent. Uh, and we will we'll, uh, get into the per package right away. So this package kind of has uh, multiple families of functions and uh, it kind of has different functions depending on the different uh, kind of output that we want to generate. So for example, map underscore LGL is to create a logical vector, map underscore int is to create an integer vector and so on. Uh, and how it works is as follows. So it first takes uh, a vector as input and then uh, applies uh, a specified function to each element of that vector and then returns a new vector that has the same length and the same names as the input. So this, these are the three basic steps, very similar to, uh, I mean, operationally, it's very similar to uh, what the uh, for loop does, uh, but we'll see how, uh, you know, elegant it makes uh, the code and how, how it can uh, solve really complex problems. Uh, so I'll start with a very basic example that's introduced in the book. Uh, so we have uh, the same data frame with four, uh, 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 four columns uh, of data, and then uh, we can simply say uh, map underscore double, uh, specify the specify the data frame, and say mean, and it creates the mean of all the four columns in the data frame. And similarly, we can just do median or SD. So just uh, as we saw in a couple of slides, uh, a couple of slides earlier, where we had to create this whole function called call underscore summary. And we, you know, used a for loop within that uh, within that function. That whole uh, that whole set of like four four to five lines can be replaced by this single function of map underscore double Q. And uh, so this is this kind of already creates like a lot of uh, elegant code, and it's easier to understand as well. And another major advantage is that it works very well with uh, the pipe operator. So we can we can uh, just use the pipe operator with the data frame and uh, just specify the function that we want to apply to each element of that vector and it kind of creates that output. So very basic examples to start with, but uh, really shows how powerful this function can be. Uh, next, we move to uh, some of the key features of the map function. So all the functions are implemented in C, which makes it faster at the expense of uh, a little bit of readability. Uh, the second key feature is that it uses the, the second argument that we saw in the, in the uh, general syntax is dot f, uh, where we used mean. Uh, so it can be a formula, a character vector, or an integer vector. Uh, we have a few examples that are coming up. And then the general map family of functions uses the dot, 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 or the three dots uh, that we saw in the functions chapter. And as we saw there, uh, these three dots can be used to pass uh, additional arguments. So a good example is uh, where we are, uh, you know, using uh, the trim argument along with the mean uh, function. So that is it. Uh, and then uh, as we also saw, it kind of pre preserves names. Uh, uh, in the in the last slide, we we saw that. Uh, sorry, uh, one of the one of the characteristics of a map function is that they always preserve the name. So if, for example, if we have a list uh, with elements X and Y uh, and we apply the function length to that list, 
uh, it retains the names of the of the two elements that is the tag so so yeah so i mean names are i mean just just a thing to keep in the back of our heads that names will always be retained when we are using a map function uh next we move to uh, some of the key shortcuts that uh, are provided with the map functions and to do that we uh, kind of uh, think back about our empty cars data set which had uh, you know all of these variables uh, cylinder type was one of the variables so it could be type 4 type 6 or type 8 and uh, the example that we are looking at is uh, let's say we want to develop a 